What's up guys, Hugh James here. Today, I just wanted to release a video sort of as an intro into me starting Wildrift content. Thought I'd give a small talk on why I think people should watch more Wildrift videos than I make in the future. So if you're excited for what's to come on this channel, make sure to drop a sub and leave a like to support the Wildrift content. And to start off with, I'll just give some background on myself for any people that might be new to the channel. So I played Vanguard for v 5 for the past three years or so, worked my way up to the highest tier, competed in some smaller tournaments, stuff like that. And on this channel, I'm mostly focused on educational content, like gameplay and guides, things along those lines. And I think that I generally do a good job of teaching new players. Something that's going to make this journey fun on my channel is that viewers can improve with me. Like, I've never played League of Legends before or anything, so I pretty much have like no game knowledge yet. And I'm hoping that through my channel, I can teach y'all from scratch as I also learn this game. And my due time, hopefully we can reach Challenger. And another thing that I think that makes this channel a little bit special is I'm not going to be like hardcore grinding the game, mostly because I just don't really have the time to play it all the time, unlike some other content creators. I'm sure that like many viewers can relate that it just really isn't ideal to fit like 10 matches a day. So to put into perspective, I've played about 40 games so far in like the 15 days that I've had this account. So that's a little bit over two matches a day, two to three matches. and. I think that sounds pretty reasonable. So instead of like brute force playing games over and over until we reach like a thousand games and finally reach Challenger, I'm hoping to take this channel in more of a like a teaching route where it won't be required for people to just play over and over and over for ages to get the hang of it. So pretty much I'm hoping to go from completely clueless about this game to higher tier without having to put in hours every day. So far where I'm at is I just started playing Wild Rift of course and I started off not knowing much at all, but at this point I have a decent idea of what the gameplay objectives are like. And I've learned a majority of the heroes and their abilities, but I still haven't learned like the ins and outs of the items, runes, build paths. I don't really know any of that yet, but I do hope to get that. I do hope to get there soon. And I hope that on this channel, I could teach you along the way as I learn too, because I'm sure there's a lot of new people that have also never played League of Legends or don't know much about the game yet. I think it's gonna be really cool watching somebody rank up from like the bottom tiers all the way to challenger because a lot of times you might go and watch some higher tier player and you're like yeah i could do that too that doesn't even seem that hard to do but then when you go into a match you just can't get there and you're trying to figure out how they get to that rank and i hope that through this channel i could show you all the entire progression route so pretty much i want to teach you guys all the heroes items runes basics of the game objectives everything for brand new players with a reasonable amount of time and commitment. So in this game, I'm actually going to be maining jungle with support as second role and then Baron lane as third role if needed. And I think that jungle is cool because one, I heard there was a lack of jungler content creators for Wild Rift, so hopefully I could fill in that gap. And two, jungle requires the most game knowledge and is where you can kind of learn the most about the game. So even if you don't play jungle, it's still a really vital role to understand. Since you need to know how the junglers act and path, so and how they're gonna gank and stuff. And also as a jungler, I'm gonna be breaking down all the lane matchups in all three lanes because you have to have a really good understanding of what's happening everywhere on the map. So you can learn a lot from that too. Because it's important to not only understand your matchups, but also what's going on the rest of the map. So so far I've played a bunch of games to try and rank up. I played like 30 matches or so to unlock ranked and Get a little bit of hang, then I just finished my 10 placement matches, and it placed me at silver 3. And we're around at 80% win rate, a little bit lower, but I think that's relatively good for somebody who just picked up the game and doesn't really have too much of an idea and is still learning the heroes and everything. And now I just kind of need to rank up a bit to see where I plateau and where I stand. So another thing that I think is cool about me is I probably do not have the best mechanics, that's not cool, but... It's relatable, I think, because I'm sure everyone here has seen some of them, like some of those insane clips on through Discord, Twitter, whatever, of just some people with some crazy mechanics. And while I can definitely make some plays, I for sure I'm not like the most mechanically gifted player. I like to rely on game knowledge, decision making, things along those lines. And I feel like a lot of players can use that if you don't think that you have the best mechanics. So that's pretty much my spiel about on why I think people should watch the Wild Rift videos I make in the future. And again, do not forget to like and subscribe if you all are excited to join me on this journey. 
from Iron to Challenger, and now I'll just finish off talking about this gameplay, I guess. So in this match, I was actually partied up with the... Let's see, who was I playing with? I was playing with the Tristana and the Kennen. So I was really, really laggy this match. I... I'm unclear why. So, our best guess was that... Because both me and the Kennen were laggy, we think it's because the Tristana was the party host, and they're like... U.S. West Coast. Well, we're both the U.S. East Coast. So I think that had to do something with it. Because I tried both Wi-Fi and data, and it just kept on lagging, so... It did make it kind of tough to land some abilities, but... So over here, the Darius is kind of caught out. I'm trying to kill him before he gets his ult off. So yeah, I try and ult him before he could ult me, just to be safe, but... Still ended up working. So again, if you're new to this game, like, don't know anything what these heroes do or anything, I'm hoping I can teach you all, so... That's gonna be the goal of this channel, so if you have no idea what's going on, that's alright, we'll get there eventually. So we're just hovering around, because I sure mid laners rotating up, but they actually engage a bit too early, and me and the cannon weren't ready yet, so... They got kinda caught out a bit. But we are able to get this champ. I think the name is John, I believe? Yeah, again, as I said, <laughs> we're still learning too, all the abilities and everything, but... Ooh, wait. Please tell me I've not been calling it heroes this entire time. Yikes, I think I have been. Well, it's champs, I gotta get that through my head. <laughs> so here, I'm just farming up, I'm... Really just trying to farm up till I get my ult back off cooldown, and then I'm gonna be looking for good gank. Because I have my flash up too. So with flash, second ability, ult. I'm gonna get a really good gank off. So their jungler actually ends up being bot lane. Actually, I don't want to go for the 1v2 because I don't know if they have flash or anything up. So I don't want to full on commit and then give up my bounty. Because that would be bad news. I really don't want to give them my shutdown. Because we're now on 4 0 and 1, so I'm worth a decent amount of gold if they kill me. And they're actually already ahead, so last thing I'd want to do is give them more gold. So I play really cautious this entire match as to not give him my bounty. I don't know if it's called bounty in this game, but my shutdown gold. Because if I do give him my shutdown gold while they already have a lead, that's just going to like extend their lead even more. So for this match, I'm mostly using a pre-made build. I'm not going to be changing up like the build mid-match or anything depending on what we need yet, because I don't have that good an understanding of the items yet, but that is something that I do want to pick up very soon and that I do hope to make a video on. So over here now, I'm just heading up behind this Darius. If I can land an ult on him, I can pretty much kill him, but he just flashes away. Probably a good thing, because that Ash hero probably would have screwed me over. So again, our mid laner rotates up, and we're looking to dive this. I'm struggling with the lag in the 10% battery sign. But I still somehow got out of that alive. I really have no idea how that happened, because... Pretty much turned dove off frozen screen. But we did get out of it. Yeah, the lag makes the movements really choppy. It's like, it's generally not like this, but it just was for this one match for some reason. But yeah, it makes it like, it makes it, the joystick a bit harder to use. So again, looking at the scoreboard, I have five of our team's seven kills. So I'm being really careful not to die, because if I die and then I fall behind in gold, then like our entire team is behind, like there's nobody that can match up against them, so... I'm just being very careful not to die. Over here I get a nice A ability onto the... Graves. And he's one shot. I maybe could have kept on committing for that and gotten it, but... Again, as I said, I didn't want to die and we're still able to pick up a kill and force him out. So that's good for us. Now this Fizz is heading over. This Fizz was really fed this match. So over here, I realized if I just kept on running in a straight line, I'd probably get killed there, so... That Darius shows up. I'm able to ult him back. Still somehow alive. This Fizz just keeps on chasing. I'm able to get out of that again. And we made it. So, I probably should have... I wasn't expecting whatever slowed me to slow me so much. I thought I'd be able to get out of that, but... I should have just waited in the pit for my second ability to come back off cooldown, and then just dashed on the other side. That probably would have been a better way to get it, to get out of that. So yeah, like, their Fizz is 6-0, and, oh, and 
He does so much damage, so I was having a hard time to pretty much deal with him. So they were able to get the dragon there because they forced us out pretty much. So that was kind of unfortunate, but... So in this match, I was actually in a voice chat with the Kennen and Tristana. And they were telling me that they really need their items. Their light game, they'll scale better once they do get them, so... At this point, I'm just trying to keep my team into a match until I do get their items. And then try and let them carry while I just support them. So I was able to land a nice first ability onto Drona. I just poke him a bit and then get out of there pretty much. We burned out both the Drona and the Fizz's ult. Which is really important because the Drona ult was a really big problem for our, for our team this match. And now we're trying to get this Fizz. He's really out of position. I did a decent amount of damage with my ult. And we were able to clean him up which is nice. So our ADC was able to get the kill, which is really good because they got the shutdown gold from that. So that works out pretty well. Even if like one of our teammates died for it, that's definitely worth it because a shutdown gold is worth a lot more gold than like any one of our teammates dying. So our cannon was able to get a kill, but they kind of get caught up by the ash. So over here, I don't have ult or anything. But we're able still we're still able to clean that up. We're pretty fed this match too. So one cool thing that I like about Lee Sin is you can pretty much just go in, like burst him down, poke him out, and then just dash back out. Like that's what I did when I landed my first ability onto Ajana. I pretty much just dashed in, used my third ability, and then just dashed back out and they couldn't really do anything about it. So again, I'm not exactly sure, like, who's watching this video. I'm not sure if I should assume that, like, the people watching this video, like, know what my abilities do or if they're just brand new, but... I think Leeson will be one of the first guides I make, just because I've been having a lot of fun playing with it. And it's a really good hero to learn when you're first starting, in my opinion. Because one, you do work on your mechanics a bit. And two, it forces you to use a lot of decision making, which is just important in general. So here, our team got kind of caught out. I was sort of trying to tell them to retreat, but they didn't exactly listen. Just trying to ping it, but it happens. So now I'm kind of trying. To, I'm kind of like trying to defend this one before our cannon comes in, but they have a. Alright, comp I think for poking us. The ash is a problem. So here we're just trying to wave clear at this point. See if we can get a decent engage. So again, I poke him out and I try and dash back out, but I actually got caught into the Darius pull and ulted, which is unfortunate. I should have dashed further downwards to make sure that the Darius didn't pull me. Because I wasn't really expecting that, but we were able to clean this up pretty much. And we got, we got three kills for that, which I think that's a good trade because again, uh, my role as a jungler is pretty much to just get my teammates ahead, let them reach their power spikes, and I think that their power spikes are later in the match, so that's what I was mostly trying to do, so getting them kills is definitely a good sign. So I'm pretty sure that the Graves took that. I see the Graves is kind of caught out, so I pinged them on my way. I have my ult up, but I really don't even need it. So over here, I was keeping an eye in case he flashed over the wall. If he did flash, I would have just used my A ability onto the dragon to keep on chasing. Over here now, I'm being careful. We can win this because we have numbers advantage. So I was able to poke him down a decent amount. They pretty much have to burn everything to try and get out, but our cannon just got killing spree and completely destroyed him, so that gives us room to take the dragon. So in this match, I'm not going into too much detail into the game plan what I'm doing, just because it's mostly an intro video, so I didn't want to make it anything too crazy, just it's cool gameplay pretty much, so the other videos will definitely be a bit different.
So now again, as I said, like I got my carries kills. Now they're ahead. I gave the cannon the uh, what's it called the magic buff, the blue buff. I don't know why. I call it magic buff. But now we're pretty much just resetting, shopping, getting ready for the next fight. And now these fights are looking more even. Like we took the lead in kills. The gold is evened out more. Now it's looking like we could take a fight. We both have one dragon each. Our dragon's probably better in team fights, so things are going well. So now it looks like our team wants to fight. The Darius and Tristan are kind of bot side doing their own thing, so if we do fight, it's about a 4v4. So they start up an engage way too early, like, we don't even have the cannon with this. So that's why I'm telling him to retreat, because we really didn't have him. So sadly our Tristana gets ulted by the Darius, but they're able to trade one for one. Honestly, one of the biggest things I think you could do as a new player is just trying to figure out when you should engage or not. So over here, I kind of made the mistake. I went the wrong way. Again, I'm not exactly sure what this other jungler does. So I didn't want to have to burn flash, but I did have to use it to get out of there, but that's all right. At least we lived. Our cannon's just pushing topside. So I got three people pushing this lane. We're kind of just trying to wave clear, keep them from pushing the turrets. And now we see that our cannon's on his way. So as I was saying, um, one of the biggest challenges for new players is just figuring out what engages you should take. And I think really a good rule of thumb that like more people should do is just literally count how many people are there. I mean, of course there are exceptions, but generally if the enemy has more people than you in this stage of the game and you're all the same health, probably not a good fight. Like literally just count. So over here, this was a really good engage. I saw that the Ash was caught out. So I was able to dash behind him, get a good ult. I mean, pretty much just delete their entire ADC. So over here, now I'm, I was trying to get out of there. But the Darius used ults a bit early, so... I was able to live that. And again, like, look at their graves. Their graves is in bot lane, that's... Their graves and Fizz both weren't there. Like, that was bad on their fight. They're, that was bad on their part, to overextend that far. Because you literally count, there's five of us there, three of them there, that... Probably is not a good idea. So over here now... Our cannon was trying to look for this fizz. I'm kind of low, so I got kind of worried here because I saw the fizz show up. I'm really just trying to ult him away from me. Try to keep him from bursting me down. But we were able to work it out. We bursted him down. I think the Tristana was able to clean that up. Now I'm trying to get back around to smite it. Looking back at this, what I probably could have done is I could have smited the uh, Baron Asher to get some extra health to make sure I couldn't dab it. I don't think I realized when I was first doing it. So again, that's what's kind of cool about like watching over some gameplays. You realize some mistakes that you made in other things that you could have done. Trust me, I know it sounds silly, but if you're new to the game, you don't understand how the hero's abilities and stuff works. Literally just count. Trust me, it helps so much for new players. Like just look at the maps, see how many people are there, and then try to make a good decision. The Elder Dragon spawning, so we start to head towards that to see if we could take it. And now all of us are back alive, so we're going to have five of us here very soon. Now we're pretty much expecting them to engage. Our cannon was getting ready to engage if they did contest. So that's what he was pinging, but I really, I, we secured this really fast, and now we were looking for this fight. And again, the delay on my A ability was kind of obnoxious to use, so... Again, we're pretty much able to just clean them up. Again, they're really out of position. Like, they were not ready to take that fight for sure. But I think that's what's going to make this channel really fun. Is It's going to focus a lot on decision making. Learning along the way. And I hope you all enjoy that. So again, that's what's fun about Jungler. You could pretty much... You pretty much just carry your team. Like You keep them alive. You get them to their power spikes. And then... You hope that could do their job, and definitely worked out this match. It was a fun match. We were able to carry the early game, and then late game we made some good plays onto some of their ADCs. Able to delete them, so that's pretty much about it for this video. Again, this was just an intro to Wild Rift content. 
next video is definitely being more in-depth breaking down guides stuff of things along those lines so if you're excited for this make sure to drop a sub leave a like comment down below and that's gonna be about it thanks for watching i'll see y'all in the next video